Hey everyone, as we anticipated some new buildings and items were just added to Townstar and will be part of the Honeycomb meta for the July Gala competition. So I'm going to explain the important parts of this competition and the whole update just to tell you what you should know. This competition runs from July 26th, 2022 to July 30th, 2022. The prizes will go to the top 1000 placements in the competition server and all prizes will be gala starting at 150 gala tokens for rank 1000 and although it is not specifically mentioned the meta is indeed honeycomb for points and i think honey for cash although the cash for the honey really isn't that great I'm not sure if it's even worth crafting honey. If you're not selling honeycombs for points, I am fairly sure you will not get to rank top 1000, as a lot of other higher tier crafts are still nerfed. So I'm going to explain how all of the new things introduced to the game work. Starting with the beehive. They will craft three new items. Honey, honeycomb, and wax. The bees will only collect the nectar themselves while the other materials are supplied by the beekeeper. Nectar is a new item as well, supplied by a new terrain object called the wild clover. No materials are needed to craft nectar and it works just like meadow. It can only be collected by the bees and it is not stored anywhere else but in the beehive to use as a crafting material. The beehive is negatively impacted by pollution, but that should be no problem to avoid. So like other livestock, they also don't require a road. The beekeeper is in charge of bringing the lumber and the ceramic bowls to the beehive for crafting. And also collects the product that the beehive has crafted and brings it to the appropriate storage, which is either the pantry or the warehouse. The beekeeper has pricey wages of 150 per minute. Pantry is a new storage building that stores honey, honeycomb, and jam. Also, jam doesn't get stored in the storehouse anymore, so now it gets stored in the pantry. Now, the pottery shop. There's a lot to talk about in the pottery shop. So the pottery shop, this will craft a new item called the ceramic bowl. This item will be used in all of the beehive crafts, so it is essential to craft this. The ceramic bowl requires two clay lumps, one water drum, and two energy. Clay lumps are also a new item, which is gotten from a new object called the clay field. The clay field requires three water in order to start crafting clay clumps, which can either be collected by an industrial worker from the worker house and stored in a warehouse, or collected by the pottery shop worker directly to be used in the craft. Okay, back to the pottery shop though, because there's a lot you need to know with this one. You could supply passive water drums with a water pump without much of a problem but passive energy will definitely be a problem you see the pottery shop does not like pollution and the power plant casts as much pollution as it gives passive energy which won't work well so you're going to have two options that work right now First option is to have your pottery shops away from any pollution so they will have green timers. And you will have something crafting lots of energy and taking it to a warehouse. Such as two power plants. But apparently even that's not enough for this build, I'm still lacking energy. Your pottery workers will collect all the energy they need from the warehouse manually. Second option requires the 888 Orb of Hope NFT, which was only recently announced. If you don't know what this does, it negates any pollution to the adjacent 8 tiles. So, a proximity level 1 effect. These tiles act as if they have zero pollution. 
If you happen to have one of these, you can set them up next to your pottery shops like this. And you will be able to, to achieve passive energy without affecting the craft times of the pottery shop. Now, there is hypothetically another option, but as of recording this video, there's a bug, but just in case it gets fixed, I will mention it. Uh, nuclear power plants give up to four passive energy and shade, but no pollution. Problem is, I believe there is a bug that the team is already aware of with the nuclear power plant, still causing the pottery shop to have a red timer. I don't think it'll get fixed in time, but if it does, that is a viable option. Just keep in mind that you would need to have a mountain to be able to get the iron and then the steel to craft the nuclear power plants just to do this. And I suppose if you have a lot of solar panels and Tesla coil NFTs, you should be able to use those to provide passive energy as well. So anyways, the reason you don't want to have red, red craft timers is because it starts at 2 minutes and 30 seconds at a green timer and goes all the way to 20 minutes at a red timers. But most importantly, the pottery shop has insane wages of 600 per minute. You absolutely can't have long craft timers if you're going to be paying that much in wages. Um... Another thing to note is the wool storage NFT is now placeable in game. It stores 10 wool and it only stores wool. I actually bought a couple of these so I have 5 because I'm planning to rush wool hard and I like the ability to put multiple storages in different locations. Plus I needed at least 3 of them to be able to sell in batches of 25 at a time with my dragon. And just to mention wax again. This item is stored in the warehouse, it has no valuable use in this meta, so ignore it completely for the time being. My speculation is that it'll be used to craft the candles in a future update. It's right here. And one more thing, some of you may have noticed a third craft in the lumber mill called the wooden box. This was not supposed to be added in this update, and therefore was quickly patched out as soon as it was noticed. So we do know that wooden boxes will be coming to the game in the future update as well. So I think that's all I have to say about the new additions to the game. And I basically gave some of my suggestions in the process. As for this build you see right here, it's just something I put together to see how everything flows. I don't plan on using this for the competition because it's not balanced. But it gives me a rough idea of what will work. So hopefully it gives you some idea too. I feel like I run into cash flow issues, but I'm going to try to rush for a lot of cash doing wool rush from the start. I'm also noticing energy issues and lumber issues. Looks like I need more lumber mills and more power plants than I originally thought I would. Um, okay, so I do have a few more suggestions. I highly recommend a desert biome for this meta because if you don't have any passive crude oil NFTs then the passive crude oil from the oil seep will help you a ton by building power plants next to it which will allow you to craft energy without needing to manually supply the crude oil. You also get to do the same with your petroleum so it makes crafting gas easier too. So for the sake of being competitive I think a desert tile is a must. Um, I don't feel like a river tile is a must this time since it doesn't seem like you will need that much water other than for trees and clay fields depending on how you set that up. Um, also there's a very limited amount of desert tiles with rivers so I would just ignore rivers this time around. Mountain is a maybe. And I mean a big maybe because it depends on whether you think the nuclear power plants will be a viable option for this meta, uh, assuming they fix the bug in time. Yeah, that, that's how I could think of. Oh, I wanted to show off my dragon. It's already sold a bunch of times. Uh, managed to get the dragon by placing offers. 
on all the 10 different dragon vouchers on OpenSea. So got a good deal on it considering the current market prices for the dragon vouchers. So I'm happy about that. Considering I'm going to play Townstar and Mirandis and the dragon is going to have utility in both of those games. I figured it was the right choice. Even if it's just a pet dragon that follows me follows me around in Mirandis, I think it's going to be cool. Yeah, but in Town Star, the dragon is really useful. No gas used when selling. And the in-game auto sell is probably still broken when it comes to the dragon. Right now, I'm using the script, so it works. But eventually, they will fix the in-game auto sell issue with it requiring gas to work. Anyways, before I finish off this video, let's quickly check out the Townstar playbook. The Townstar playbook has already been updated with all the new additions and information. Remember, you can also click the uh, change log to view all the new additions and click on the blue text. And it'll take you to the card views of the items. Might be faster that way, but do whatever pleases you. Also something I mentioned I was working on in one of my videos a while back ago. For most of the items you can now see all the materials that go into crafting that item. This will help you figure out what your production rate should look like if, um, if you're using scripts that show your hourly production rates and whatnot. You can also save a copy of this spreadsheet and edit that copy. So you can change the number right here to change the quantity and it's going to adjust the materials needed for the quantity as well as showing you the uh, cash and points for that quantity as well super neat um, oh if you see any black lines appear here just ignore them it's just some weird visual bug when it updates it still works do this Okay, I believe that's all I wanted to discuss in this video. The new meta looks super fun, but the competition rewards aren't very good like the last gala competition in June. I'm still going to participate because I know I'll rank since I have some good NFTs to help me out. Um, thank you so much for supporting my content. I would greatly appreciate it if you like this video and feel free to leave a comment letting me know how you feel about these updates or if you plan on participating in this competition. And feel free to subscribe if you like. Thank you for watching.